Hello, and thanks for joining me. I'm Debbie Miller, host of Move or Improve with Debbie. And if you've been listening in, you know I'm working on a series called Home Sweet Home, talking about different styles of communities that you could move to depending on what your interests are and how to figure out if that type of community is right for you. So this time I'm going to talk about active adult communities and master plan communities. And there's a difference. There's some similarities, but there are differences too. And I want to make sure you know the difference and understand so you can make a good decision as to which one might work for you. So basically, congratulations, you're going to sell your home and you're going to move to an easier lifestyle. So making that decision is time consuming. In this session, I'm going to talk about what to look for in an active adult community and points to consider as you make your decision. And I'm going to talk about master planned communities and how they differ from active adult communities and how they may be similar. The first active adult community was built outside of Phoenix, Arizona in the mid 1950s. It's still a very vibrant community today. Baby boomers are retiring at a fast pace and builders are scurrying to fill the needs of this generation. Baby boomers want to lead vibrant lifestyles as long as possible. So many are going to sell the more expensive home and they're going to move to a less expensive home. They're going to save on taxes, have better weather, and be convenient to amenities in the community as well as outside the gates. Typically in an active adult community, at least one occupant of the property must be at least 55. So when you're looking, you want to consider these questions and answer them according to your needs. First of all, you need to know what your budget is. So selling your home and buying something less expensive allows you to invest the difference. Uh, your realtor can give you a good idea of what the value of your current residence is and an estimate of your proceeds. But if you have a mortgage, of course, that has to be paid off. <clears throat> and then you'll be paying a monthly homeowner association fee, and that covers maintenance of all the amenities, like if there's a pool, fitness center, clubhouse, the gardens, walking trails, exterior maintenance. That's no yard work. That's good insurance, roads, taxes, and you pay the worker salaries. So instead of you having to do all that on your own, you pay a monthly fee and the homeowner association takes care of that for you, which is a good thing. Does not include your meals and your health care, so you make sure you need to add that into your budget. Second thing to consider is what universal design features does the home have? Most builders today, um, because of ADA regulations, are including wider hallways and doors and making the living on one level. There's possibly a loft upstairs for the grandkids to stay in and the taller toilets to make it easier to live in your new space with walk-in showers. You want to make sure that the shower area has been reinforced behind the tiles. You can add a grab bar later if you need it. Herbless showers are great, but many builders charge extra to provide this, so you want to ask that up front. And it is worth it to get the um, get it done before you move in, and it is good for resale value, so it is worth the extra money. It's just a matter of finding out how much it's going to cost. I have been to uh, retirement communities that are active adult where they don't have the shower walking in a uh, roll-in shower and I asked them they said oh no that's an extra so why they do that I don't know I guess it makes some extra money but you want to ask what amenities does the community provide and this can get overwhelming if it's a large community uh, they can have all kinds of everything from pickleball and golf and canasta and all kinds of stuff but if you don't play golf, do you really want to pay a monthly fee that co covers the cost of maintaining the greens? Some uh, communities are getting smart about this and they are building the community in close proximity to golf courses that are on the outside of the community so that you can get a reduced price to, pay, pay, uh, to play golf there. But you don't have to maintain it as part of your community. And that's good because the upkeep on golf courses gets pricey. And many places are finding that, uh, you know, people don't play golf as much anymore. When you get older, your arms start to hurt, your arthritis sets in. So if you're going to play golf, that's great. 
but buy in a community that's surrounded by golf courses that allows you to play as you play. And zoning regulations may prevent the redevelopment of a course if it becomes too expensive to maintain. You don't want to have to be in that situation in, when you're getting older and you're on a fixed income. If a course is redeveloped by chance, what will be built on that site? If you paid a premium for a golf course view and the course is closed, what will that lush area look like in a few years? And who's going to take care of it if it's not being used? How are they going to maintain it? Another thing to consider is you want to look into what the security is. Most of these communities are gated. And there may be a guard at the main entrance who verifies your residency and lets you in, or you have a card to swipe. Uh, are there cameras around the community to help in policing the area? Do security guards walk or drive the community at night? What happens if you're out walking and something happens? Uh, how good is the security as far as the... Um, skip that part. Do securities... Do security guards walk or drive the community at night? What's the surrounding area like? Crime rates tend to be lower inside the gates than in outside the community, but you still want to check the crime rate in the surrounding city or town just to see if it's safe to venture there for shopping or nightlife. What is the uh, public transportation like? At some point, you may decide to give up your car, but is there Uber or Lyft or a bus service? The community will have a host of amenities, but you want to venture out for shopping in restaurants or go to a show. So how far is the closest airport? If you're going to go visit the grandkids or they're going to come to you, you don't have to drive two hours. If you're moving, but you want to make it convenient for kids and grandkids to visit, convenience to a major airport is very important. Does the area on the whole have good public transportation what about medical facilities like doctors and hospitals? That's very important. You may not need them now, but if you plan on living in a community for 10 years, chances are good that your health will deteriorate and you want the convenience of good medical facilities. And as you age, you may need assisted living or memory care. That's not in an active adult community. You have active adults. That's why it's called active, not assisted. So you want to make sure you're living close by and not just any old active um, assisted living, you want to go visit them and see because not all assisted living facilities are the same. Another thing to look at is how active is the community? What do you want from the community, not only now, but in the future? Some communities have huge clubhouses and a myriad of organized activities and social calendars that make your head spin. But if you don't like doing any of that, then you're going to want to look at another location. Many communities encourage you to stay overnight or for a weekend, and that's a good way to learn more about what they offer and talk with residents about the community. You'll meet people from all over, so it's a great way to make new friends. If you buy into an older community, you'll be prepared to surround yourself with people in their 70s and 80s who may not be as active as you are or want to be. Moving to a newer community attracts a younger audience. Another thing you want to look at when you're looking at um, floor plans and the model homes, is the home suitable for your lifestyle and your age? You want a first floor master suite, low maintenance, and a few steps are standard. But many communities have condo buildings. They include villas, patio homes, townhouses with elevators. So you want to look at all your options, especially in the larger communities. Zoning regulations prevent junk cards and uh, junk cars and zoning regulations prevent junk cars in the yard, weird house colors or inconsistent landscaping. So if your situation changes and a grandchild has to move in with you permanently, how easy will it be to sell your home and move outside the community because that grandchild will not be allowed to stay any longer than most of the time two weeks. Are you a loner or a joiner? If you like quiet, being on your own, an active adult community may not be for you. But there are certainly many amenities that can appeal to you. Communities will have usually a lifestyle director who will help you be as active as you like. Active adult communities can, can cure loneliness. 
since uh, you may not be inclined to join a group of couples if you're single, but many communities have groups for singles who travel together and socialize. And I would suggest when you're doing your preliminary visit, if you're single, you want to find out how many singles are living there and what kinds of things do they enjoy. Because even if you go in as a couple and one of the spouses or significant others passes away, you're going to be single. So you want to find that out. You want to look at the disadvantages. And there's not a lot of diversity, for one thing. Everybody's over the age of 55. So you won't see many young people unless you or your neighbor's grandkids are visiting. The homeowner association rules may be too restricted for you. You will have an opportunity to review the rules and regulations and be sure you do. You may be restricted in whether you can have a pet or what kind of pet or how many pets and how much they have to weigh. You'll re have find out about where you and guests can park, how long guests can visit, a lot of other things. If you don't like those kinds of rules, then an active adult community may not be the one for you. Just remember that you're living life in a fishbowl. Homes in these communities are close together. So if you enjoy your privacy, then you may want to look elsewhere. I mean, you can be out on a screened in porch in the backyard facing a creek or whatever, but your next door neighbor is having a party or they're just a few feet away. If that's okay for you, then that's fine. Then you want to look and find out how far away is a downtown area, because many times you need to hop in your car and drive to the doctor, go shopping, go to a restaurant. How far away are these amenities? As you get older, it becomes more of a challenge to get to these places. So good ideas, look at what assisted living facilities are close by, like I said before, so you don't have to move later on and find new doctors and that sort of thing. How efficient and well run is the board of directors? Well, some communities have high fees depending on the amenities offered. It's an, if it's a new community, then the transfer of power from the developer to the homeowner association requires that the residents take over the management. So what are the residents' qualifications? Some of them will have plenty of time on their hands to monitor the community and that may drive you crazy. You need to research the community and whenever possible, talk one-on-one -on -one with those board members. There are many issues that can trip you up if you're not careful. And you want to find out again, are pets allowed? Can you bring Fifi or Fido? What type and what size? How many? How long can guests stay? This is very important. Many places allow for guests as long as two weeks, but not usually for too much more because I have seen situations where grandparents moved into the over 55 community and due to unforeseen circumstances, grandchild had to move in with them and that's a violation of HOA rules so they had to move out and it was difficult to sell the property in, on short notice and find another place to live. Again you want to find out what the monthly fee is and be sure you understand what it includes. You want to know how much work or maintenance you have to do <clears throat> versus what they'll do for you. This will affect the association and its ability to maintain the community if many owners don't pay their monthly fee in a timely manner. And how is the community managed? Is there a large reserve fund? Are there frequent assessments? What are they for? If you're in a newer community, your assessments are not going to be a problem until you've been there for a while and the roads need to be repaved or whatever. How long does a board member serve? Some of these people stay on there and they think they're king of the uh, King of the Nile, as it were. Are they full-time or are they snowbirds who are absent part of the year? So, you know, if they're not there during summertime, what happens if something happens? Do you like to decorate at the holidays? Well, you got to check the rules to see if you, can, if you can do that and what kind of stuff you can hang. You need to understand the rules.